I was like, yes, Lord Jesus, let me be willing to 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 be used by you for my purpose. Tell me what to do. That's right, because you know what? Whatever God tells you to do is always going to be simple and easy. The next step is always simple and easy. If you are frustrated, then you are not on God's step. You might be on your step, but you're not on God's step because he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's right. So whatever step God has you to do is always real easy. Because he knows where you are in maturity. He knows what's going on with your relationship. He knows about your children. He knows what is best for you. And many times God will speak to us through common sense. That's right. I have never known God to move outside of common sense when it was God. Right? And a lot of times we might have shame, we might have been shamed with owning our own thinking and owning our own feeling reality, but God says, you shall forget the shame of your youth. Sometimes you need, God, take away the shame that I feel about myself at the core of who I am so that I can be of usage for you, so I can be in your purpose. You know what? The second reason that I think is really important for us to operate in our purpose and our passions is because when you have a platform for artistic creative expression, you can give a public face to private pain. You know, I don't know about you, but it is shared pain with uh, a public figure that moves me towards them because a lot of times celebrities people who are you know on the radio and on TV and and you know I don't know the magazines you know they they seem many times they seem godlike people say that people accuse us of um, being a celebrity crazed nation and and they feel like we make celebrities gods and a lot of times it's because when you see somebody in the public eye they have the grace and they have the grace to be there they're usually using their spiritual gifts and God-given talents so in other words we experience the presence of God when they are using their gifts and their talents just like you do when I'm doing this I know you do because of the testimonies that I get. I get a whole bunch of them. Thank you. And if you have a testimony to send me, send me a testimony. Just use the email link. Right? I mean, I come here every single day. So just use the email link and that'll work. So when people are using their God-given gifts, they seem God-like. Right? And, and like when Michael Jackson used to dance, it was like there is something that is not human. There is something that is not human that is moving Michael Jackson. Right? Did you feel that way? What is that when he would moonwalk? He said, no, that's not a human. It was a God-given gift and talent, and we like that. People work hard to, be, to pay other people for their talents. Amen? Now, when we see these people, Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, I used to see Michael Jordan go down the basketball court. I mean, to me, it was like, that's not a human being. But yet, see, when he does that, something bigger than him that is not human is helping him. And people did not feel that way when Michael Jordan played baseball. Like Joyce Meyer said that when she gets off the stage, she said she feels so normal. She says she just feels like so normal walking around the house. Like just like, are you sure I'm supposed to be on the stage? But then when she gets on the stage, that presence of God, the anointing, the, pre the presence of God shows up in order to tell us and everybody else, this is what you're here to do. So I think this celebrity crazed godlike thing is about us seeing people in their 
gift, their spiritual gifts, and their talents, their God-given talents. And every time we see these people, they're either doing they're doing that. They're, we are seeing them play baseball. We're seeing them sing a song. We're seeing them uh, give a speech. We see them on Oprah. So every time we see these people, every time we see them, we and they're using their gifts. We experience this God-like energy around them and so if we're not careful we can think that people who are famous who are using their gifts are godlike because we only see them during the 15 20 minutes one hour whatever when they're using their spiritual gifts like I'm on the radio and we accept callers and and somebody had called me and I called her back and she was shaking and crying and I can't believe I can't believe you're calling me back and blah blah this and that and this is somebody who sees me or who heard who hears me for 15 minutes a week at 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> but at uh, for 15 minutes a week and the only thing she hears is me channeling spitting my my thing the thing that God has given me to do because I'm real raw on the radio because you know it's but she said because of you I sent my designs to Walmart and they accepted it <laughs> Now listen, so she's thinking that, oh, I, oh yeah, and this and this baby don't have a clue how many issues I have. I did this one woman show and my sponsor brought her daughter from Celebrate Recovery, the 12-step program at church. And she brought her daughter to the function where I was doing the one woman show and her daughter can't stand her mama right now because she's a teenager and she just got to not like her mama. And she thought it was so cool that I was on the stage and she was like, oh, this, and she wanted to take pictures with me and all this. And she took and sent it to her friends and text and Twittered and all this stuff, right? What she didn't know was after all that, I went in the back room with her mama saying, oh, Jesus, <laughs> oh, God, my life, my life, my life. You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> But yet and still, when somebody is operating in their gifts, they seem God-like. So imagine somebody looking at you in that God-like energy and you being a public figure to whatever community God has called you to, right? But imagine having that godlike energy stream out of you and you become a public face for a private pain because there are so many people who feel defective and worthless and not good enough and deformed and and abnormally imperfect and for somebody who who looks up to you somebody hears you tell your your pain, your sorrow. I mean, what pain are you going to make famous? That's right. Oprah made sexual abuse famous. Joyce Meyer, I believe, has made um, incest famous. What's his name? My, uh, what's that guy named? Mark, Michael J. Fox. He has the Parkinson's disease. He's made. He's well, not famous, but he's definitely brought it into the awareness of a whole lot of more people that maybe was not aware of it before you know the the pain that I would want to make famous is the pain of of shame because shame or emotional abuse was the dominant form of abuse that I experienced and that my mother experienced and her mother experienced and their father's experience and it's and it's a generational thing and what Pia Melody says about shame is when I say shame I'm talking about a feeling of being morbidly defective defective and and flawed abnormally imperfect like you're just the like just disgusting thing and you know I have and still struggle with not as bad a shame existence bind in which 
you know, someone shamed me for being alive. I remember being told on a regular basis, why did God give me a child like you?